I suspect you have questions. Warning. This video contains spoilers from Dragon Age Inquisition's Trespasser DLC. You've been warned. Theory. The Forgotten Ones were slaves. A quick reminder. The Forgotten Ones are known as the malevolent deities said to have waged war against the creators. We learned that the creators were not in fact gods, rather they were just extraordinary mages, who owned slaves as confirmed via Sotus at the end of Trespasser. One of the few entries we have on the Forgotten Ones seems to have been written by one of the Forgotten themselves. The entry reads, There are no gods. There's only the subject and the object, the actor and the acted upon. Those who will to earn dominance over others, gain title not by nature, but by deed. I am Gelderon, and I refuse those who exert will upon me. Let Andrew's bull crack, let Juma's fire grow cold. Let them build temples and lure the faithful with promises. Their pride will consume them, and I forgotten will claim power of my own, apart from them until I strike in mastery. Codex Entry, Gelderon's Claim This codex seems to suggest that Gelderon is planning his revenge. And while I agree, it also seems to hint at something more. Once we learned that the Evanurs had slaves, I read this codex again and saw it differently. Starting with the line, I am Gelderon and I refuse those who will exert will upon me. This made me question who was forcing the will onto him. If he alone with the other forgotten ones were considered as gods, then who could force him to do something unwillingly? This is what made me consider that he himself may have been a slave. That slave has another's will forced upon him. This along with how Fenrir is the rebel god and is often associated with Forgotten Ones, may believe that Forgotten Ones may have in fact worked alongside Sodas to free the elven slaves. The line, there are no gods, there is only a subject and the object, the actor and the acted upon. The sign implies that Galderon knew the creators were not gods, and that the gods were the actors and the subject, while the slaves, or perhaps the elven people who worship the creators, are the objects and the ones being acted upon. This from the perspective of a slave makes some sense. I started to look at the rest of the lines as if they were referring to slavery. Those who will to earn dominance over others gain title not by nature but by deed. It seems he's saying the creators were not born to dominate, but rather they took dominance with their power. So this even confirms this as he says the gods became known as such after a war where they were first known as generals and powerful mages. And I've forgotten will claim power of my own. This sounds a lot like a slave stating he will gain his freedom. If dominance or freedom is claimed through power, then what more would a slave seeking freedom want? Then there's that title, The Forgotten Ones. It seems strange that Gelderon referred to himself as Forgotten. Was that their title when these gods were present or after the gods were sailed away? His awareness of being called Forgotten makes it seem like they were already referred to as such, which is strange. However, the word Forgotten isn't capitalized in the Codex. This in context stuck out to me. Since that Sotus took his name as Fenerel, that was meant to be disrespectful, he carried the name proudly. I suggest that the Forgotten Ones did the same. They used this title as a way of saying they are fighting for those often forgotten and mistreated. The slaves, obviously. After learning that the creators had slaves, it was strange we never got a codex confirming this. Usually we get codex in-game that adds to what we learn about the world, or as of Inquisition, the codex is updated. However, this doesn't seem to be the case here. We didn't receive a codex on the oven gods owning slaves, or an update of any kind. If there was one and I missed it, please let me know. It just doesn't seem to exist. It isn't until you look at Gelderon's codex entry that it may confirm what Sotus tells us. It becomes the words of a slave who wants to rebel, who wants freedom. This gives us merit as to why the Forgotten Ones may have been fighting against the creators, perhaps to liberate slaves. Now obviously this is all speculation, not along with the fact that I'm basing this off of one codex entry and the little information that Sodas gives us in Trespasser doesn't help. We have little to nothing on the Forgotten Ones. This makes it increasingly more difficult to draw any side of conclusion. There's just no evidence to truly support my theory, however there's just as little evidence to disprove it. In conclusion, the Forgotten Ones are a mystery shrouded in darkness. While we've known about them since Origins, we've gotten nothing regarding them until Inquisition. And we only get this codex in the Jaws of Hakon DLC, found during the Mystery of Winter quest in a locked chamber of all places. Why, why in, why in this DLC do we get this codex that has nothing to do with Elven Gods? A random codex that adds nothing to Jaws of Hakon. 
perhaps it was meant as an easter egg for us to start thinking about the forgotten ones, especially once we discover the truth about the creators. It's all just a theory. Anyway everyone, let me know what you think. Do you buy into this idea? Maybe you have evidence to support it or even debunk it. Leave me a comment below or message me on Twitter, Bioware, Mino, or on Reddit to tell me just how crazy this is. Thank you for watching. I hope this theory got you all thinking. I'll see you next time. Finarel and Unsolved.